Hello and welcome back to Ontario Soccer's Made in Ontario podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Schwinnard, excited to be here with another World Cup-inspired episode. Today, we have a very special guest tuning in all the way from the pre-tournament camp in Australia, the one and only Kadisha Buchanan. She was the FIFA Women's World Cup Best Young Player in 2015, the year she debuted at the tournament, and was also named Canadian Player of the Year in 2015, 2017, and 2020. Last year, ESPN had her ranked as the 26th best female soccer player in the world. But before we hear from Kadisha, we had a chance to speak with someone she says played a large part in her development as a soccer player. Cyprian McFarlane, her former coach from Brams United and Aaron Mills Soccer Club. McFarlane has worked with a number of elite soccer players and continues to help athletes take their career to the next level through his work as an athletic recruiting and scholarship specialist. Let's hear what he has to say. It's my pleasure to welcome Cyprian McFarlane to the Made in Ontario podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. To start off, why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction? Um, how did you get into soccer? Did you play when you were younger? Um, and then a little bit about your how you got into coaching and your career. Uh, into soccer, well, um, yeah, I, I, I played when I was younger and then I um, uh, went a little bit of a different route. When I was uh, 19 one summer, I decided, okay, I wanted to, to, to coach. And then I coached House League and then the House League team became All-Star and then All-Star became Rep. And um, I coached boys for the five, first five years of my career. And then I um, moved over to coaching girls in, in, in 1995. And then the, the rest, they say, is uh, the history from uh, um, coaching anywhere all the way from uh, mini soccer players all, all the way up to all the way up to university. So when as a coach, when you have a player, you know, in their youth career, um, and you can you tell, I guess, at that level that a player is going to make it as far as, you know, the World Cup. I know you've coached, you know, Ashley Lawrence, Kadisha Buchanan, Quinn um, with those players and any other, I guess, high level soccer players that you've had over the years. Is, is that something that you can see from a really young age or is it something that they grow into kind of as they play? Well, as you said, I had the, the, the pleasure of coaching uh, Ashley and Keisha when they were very young players. I was the uh, mini soccer technical director at Brams United when they were 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in, in that bracket there. And, um, you know, I've been, you know, it's been a while now, you know, over 30 years. And uh, especially in, in, you know, to answer your question in terms of that that group or that pool of players, um, you know, um, you know, born in that that age bracket um yeah there there are some times when you can just tell that that kids are just I call it they're just cut from a different cloth you know they're 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 just different in terms of you know that they're they're you know their 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 game intelligence their technical ability you know technical awareness at, at that young age where you can see that that they've definitely got something you can't don't have a crystal ball to know um you know if they're gonna be representing Canada at, at some point but um you know, like I said, I've been blessed in my career to coach some kids that that are just heads and shoulders um, up, up, above other kids. Gotcha. So I want to get into your time working with Kadisha Buchanan specifically. Um, okay. How old was she, if you can remember? I know it was a while back, but how old was she when um, you first started coaching her? And I guess you briefly mentioned the teams that you worked with her on, um, but just tell us a little bit about all the time that you've spent with her as an athlete. Well, it was uh, two separate occasions. So mm -hmm. the first occasion was when I was at Brams United when they were mini soccer players and call them mini soccer players, but the rules have changed now that when they were that young or that age or stage, they played on the full field, actually. They didn't play mini soccer, right? So my first um, uh interaction if you want to call it with her was at the under 10 age group because she came in a year after that I started in that in that mini soccer role so was the under 10 and I guess my first memory of her was that um 
she hadn't played organized soccer before. She just played sort of in the backyard with her family and friends. And um, yeah, I remember her as we were training in the gym at uh, Cardinal Leger in, in Brampton. And, uh, you know, she was just running around. And at that time, we had them a uh, little bit more disciplined in terms of understanding, you know, how to stay in their spot or stay in their position. But yeah, that I I, I definitely remember uh, her coming in and, and just being, you know, a real little spark plug there, right? And uh, yeah. That, that was my first memory that she was just all over the place. <laughs> so before I let you go, um, I know that while serving as a soccer coach, you've also had a career as an athletic scholarships and recruiting expert. Um, oh. And a lot of young athletes in our Ontario soccer community who may be watching this podcast, they have dreams and goals that may be outside of the Ontario soccer system, whether it be a collegiate scholarship or to play in the World Cup one day, like these ladies we've been talking about. So with all of your experience as a coach and a recruiting expert, what would be the one piece of advice that you give to every young athlete who has aspirations in their career beyond the amateur level? Oh, boy, one piece of advice is... um... Don't strive to um, blend in, Um, you know, strive to stand out. You know, in my experience, you know, coaching, you know, sometimes coaching females and whatnot, right? They're um, they're, uh, afraid to step out side and and just if you want to call it be a better version of themselves or 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 be the best versions of themselves right and know uh you know a collegiate friend of mine said you know you come to a game and a blind man should be able to see who the best player is on the field right you know and i think you know certain times that you know we have our females and uh it's okay for a male to show some bravado to show some swagger right, to show some some self-confidence, right, and sometimes I think we condition our females to sort of, you know, not to be like that, or don't brag, or don't have that sort of, uh, you know, that self-confidence, so, you know, my my big piece of advice is, is, is um, look to stand out, and, and, and look to be better, so what I always say that anytime that they're competing, whether you're a midfielder, whether, you know, you're playing in the youth environment, a pay-to-play environment, strive to be the best you can at your position and and always look to compete because you're going to go from an environment where um, you're the best player on your team, but you go to other environments where everybody was the best player on their team, right? And then now you have to find a way um, to stand out and then be the, the best of the best. Yeah, that's great advice. And I think that's a great note for us to end on. So thank you so much, Cyprian, for being with us here today for the Made in Ontario podcast. Congratulations on all of your coaching success stories and best of luck with the rest of the summer. All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Once again, that was Cyprian McFarlane. Next up, we speak directly with Kadisha Buchanan about her time playing youth soccer in Ontario all the way to the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. Without further ado, let's hear from the Made in Ontario legend. Kadisha Buchanan, welcome to the show. How are things going in Australia as you prepare for the Women's World Cup? Um, things are going great. Uh, the weather has been amazing um, to play t- to play in and just to chill over pretty close to the beach it was nice to see um to get a walk down by the water um but it's been pretty intense um but also pretty calm at the same time so we're getting a good balance here well thank you so much for joining us on the made in Ontario podcast today um we we want to talk to you a little bit about your upbringing in the Ontario soccer system so to start us off today, how about you tell us a little bit about growing up in Ontario um, and when soccer became a part of your life? Uh, I mean, growing up in, I, grew, I was born in obviously Toronto, um, then I lived there about five years, and but I mainly grew up in Brampton. Um, and I did live in Mississauga for quite some time, so yeah, I, I know a little bit about Ontario, um, been around the block a few times, but yeah, I think it's it's fun. Um, my family's there. Um, I think Ontario is definitely like a, a football province. Um, there's a lot of great teams, um, a lot of great soccer teams that play 
I remember growing up, there's a lot of great teams like Wexford, Oakfield Soccer, um, Aaron Mills. Um, obviously, Brampton was the number one. And um, yeah, I, I just remember just waking up early for soccer, traveling hours and hours um, to play, um, having tournaments, just all the fun things that you know you do when you play soccer. Absolutely. So you mentioned briefly your family. Um, from what I read, it seems that you come from quite a large family. Um, I wanted to ask you, is soccer something that runs in your family or is it something that you chose individually? Yeah, definitely have a large family. Um, and soccer does run. I think we, we say it runs in our blood. Um, lots of my cousins, um, uncles. Um, brother, sisters, we all played soccer at one point in our lives. Mm. So, like my earliest memories would be of my father. Um, he's just like a local football player, but he's like well known because he played in like almost every single league. He play in Spanish league. He'll play um in the Scarborough league. He'll play um in a Brampton league. He played everywhere. Um, and I used to just remember him just packing five, six jerseys a day on the weekend. And we'll just travel around to every football, every football field, um, soccer field. And we'll just be there for hours and hours and hours. Awesome. What a great memory to have. Um, speaking of memories, I want to talk a little bit about your time in youth soccer in Ontario. So. Um, at eight years old, you joined the Brands United Soccer Club in Brampton, as um, you mentioned, that's where you grew up. So can you tell us what you remember best about your time with that club? Um, and if there were any coaches or maybe some other athletes there who had any kind of impact on you? Yeah, so I started playing soccer when I was eight years old at Brands United Soccer Club. Um, I remember playing basically like one full season of indoor so house league um we played at the Brampton Fairgrounds down by like Mayfield um so I had one indoor season um playing for um house league and then that summer when summer came around um I think it was Cyprian um, McFarlane um I think Ashley's mother um, saw me playing at the Brampton Fairgrounds and su suggested that I should try out for like the All-Star Select team. And um, I think by that summer, I made the, the rep team. So I think it was a pretty fast transition from going from House League to playing rep in about maybe a half a season. And I think I think that's due because um, just me training with my father, me just running up and down, playing with other um kids while their parents played football so I think I was pretty advanced not knowing I mean I didn't know what a position was like I was just running all over the field but when I got to rep I learned like what is a striker what is like a winger and I I, I got more a little bit studied in, in that position okay and then from your time at um Brands United we know that you moved on to Aaron Mills Soccer Club for a little while um, can you tell us about any highlights of your time with that club and any, again, coaches or athletes there that had an impact on you? Oh, yeah. So when I was at Brams United, um, Ashley Lawrence was at Brams United as well. So I met Ashley U9 and played with her ever since. Um, yeah, there was many athletes. I think Brams United dominated um what's it, the Ontario Soccer League for many, many years. Um, we had a powerhouse team up until maybe 15 years old. Um, 15 years old, why I switched to play for Aaron Mills. So I played for Aaron Mills starting at U16, and that team was also stacked. Um, Ashley was on that team. Quinn was on that team. And um, just many other players that played on the provincial team at that time. So it was a pretty stacked team um, leading up into going into college. So 
So yeah, from your days in the Ontario soccer system, you know, you went on to have an incredibly successful collegiate run at West Virginia University, and you went pro shortly after that. Nowadays, you're playing for one of the world's biggest clubs in Chelsea, and of course, Team Canada. So Kadisha, you made your debut for the senior national team back in 2013. That's just about 10 years ago now. So looking back and out of the long list of things you've accomplished in that time, what are some of the things you're most proud of? Yeah, I mean, 10 years is a long, um, long time. But yeah, I think all that could happen if I if I think the women's team didn't win bronze I feel like that was such an inspiring inspiring moment for me in my career and then end up meeting them maybe six months later having my first call for the national team and I think from then I think my career elevated just because I was playing with the world's best and one of the best soccer players in the world and um, I think that elevated my game um, to 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 go on and create probably one of my proudest moments of winning gold medal at these past Olympic games. I think that was, that is my most memorable, proudest moment of my career so far. Um, another proud memory was after the U15 Women's World Cup in um, Vancouver, um, after the finals, um, USA, Japan, crazy game, I, I I was rewarded um young young soccer player award um in the tournament and my mom was in the stand so that was also very memorable memorable moment that I will never ever forget and then for club wise was obviously winning Champions League um a few times um just winning league titles just creating memories with friends long lasting friends teammates. And um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Um, another similar question, looking back at your career, what made it possible for you to take your soccer career from the grassroots level to playing at the absolute highest level possible? What did it take, whether it be mentally or physically or socially, anything um, to get you where you are today? Yeah, I think a lot of it is practice I remember every practice um my teammates can contest like yes I I joked around a lot but also I was serious when it needed to be I think everyone will say that like I I am pretty light and fun but when it needs to be serious I am very serious so um it's just finding the the balance of having fun enjoying the moment while making sure you are obviously working hard and, and and improving to be better. So I think those two key things I've always had with me um, from when I was young till now. Well, Kadisha, the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup is just around the corner, and we know this isn't your first rodeo at the tournament. So what has the lead up to this tournament been like versus prior years with the team coming off of that gold medal finish that you mentioned at the Olympics? Higher. Um, I think probably the biggest difference um in this lead up is the amount of games I think Canada had leading up to the World Cup and the different type of offer opposition that we have been playing. I think in the past few years we a lot of times we might have missed the FIFA window and not done something, had a maybe just a camp just to play in her squad. But I think Bev is like, she's a crazy thinker and she thinks of all the things that can make us better. And she planned, um, I, like uh, she planned an international game in every international break, which is key for, for preparation and just facing different teams. Like I think this year we've played Nigeria and Australia and, now they're in our group. So I think, yeah, it's a little bit of coincidence, but it's also um, a bit of preparation that obviously we knew we were going to face certain type of teams and we've managed to um, book them in and making sure that we're we're having a good preparation and have the the best knowledge and the confidence um, going into this um, FIFA Women's World Cup. That's great. 
Another thing I wanted to ask you about, um, obviously it's a very exciting time for women in soccer. Um, and as you're probably aware, a few months ago, Project 8, led by former Canadian international Diana Maxson, was announced. Um, it's founding of a women's professional soccer league in Canada, and that's currently slated to launch in 2025. Um, what do you think, or why do you think this is important for women's soccer in Canada, and how do you think it will change things for future generations? Yeah, I'm definitely for Dana Matheson, and I think myself and all my teammates are are for Project A, and we want that to happen um, as soon as possible. Um, I think a league in Canada is obviously important, just in terms of just like foundation and just keeping the sport alive in Canada soccer and in terms of like future development I feel like a lot of the times when you are like a a young footballer you want to see women's football on tv in your country so I think that would help inspire um a lot of grassroots um to stay stay in Canada like I I wish I would have stayed in Canada I want to stay in Canada but I think the opportunity wasn't there and I think Deanna Matheson is is trying so hard um to make that happen and 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 hopefully it will happen um but yeah I think it's just so important for Canada to have a women's league um in yeah Canada so it's obviously way too early to ask, but can your fans ever expect to see you suit up for the Canadian team one day? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, hopefully my career is long enough um to last uh to when the league is is up and running. But yeah, I feel like I'd always want to retire at home. I think that would probably be no better feeling. So yeah. Great. Well, thank you again, Kadisa, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. You're a Maiden Ontario athlete that many soccer players aspire to be like, and I'm sure viewers enjoyed getting to know a little bit, getting to know you a little bit better on today's podcast. I know I did. The Ontario soccer community wishes you the best of luck in the Women's World Cup, and we are rooting for you every step of the way. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Rebecca. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the talk. Thank you. Me too. Thank you for tuning in to the Made in Ontario podcast. Follow us on social and subscribe to our newsletter, Inside the 18, for all the latest info in the Ontario soccer community. The details can be found at ontariosoccer.net. Lastly, we would like to thank our premier partners, Toronto FC, the Canadian Premier League, Atletico Ottawa, Hamilton Forge, York United, Dairy Farmers of Ontario, and BMO Bank of Montreal for supporting our mission of building the Ontario soccer community.